Vice President of the Republic of Nicaragua. I have great pleasure in welcoming the Vice President of the Republic uh, of Nicaragua, His Excellency Moises Omar Halis Devens Acevedo. I invite him to address the Assembly. Gracias. Thank you. Mr. President, President Mc greetings from the people of Nicaragua, from our President, Commander Daniel Ortega Saavedra. We wish you success in the responsibilities that you have undertaken. Today, I come to this General Assembly to present the position of Nicaragua and of our President, Commander Daniel Ortega Saavedra. I shall therefore deliver the message from our Head of State and Government, Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, President of the General Assembly of the 70th Anniversary of the United Nations, Morgans Lickertoft, Distinguished Delegates, This 70th General Assembly commemorates the 70th anniversary of our organization. Seven decades ago, 51 states signed the Charter of the United Nations. Nicaragua is a founding state. The world was at that time emerging from a terrible war and humanity was crying out for peace, 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 as was said by our immortal Ruben Dario. Since the 24th of October 1945, the United Nations Organization has projected to the world an image of an entity which would bring peace, but from its foundation until today, the stated objectives have been frustrated. As we celebrate the 70th anniversary, we are now 193 member states, and the organization which we created was created in a completely different world. Now it must be transformed. We inhabit a planet with more people, and we are threatened by multiple and highly complex challenges a world where egotism, arrogance, and interference have altered and completely broken the right to peace, sovereign security, and life for millions of human beings. We therefore demand a deep reflection in order to reinvent, democratize, and recast the United Nations. We want an organization with equal rights for all its members and that is more effective in facing the challenges of justice and equitable, sustainable, secure and sovereign development, but above all, peace. The increasing greed of global capitalism, particularly in the Middle East and in Africa, has caused wars and has created, fostered, cultivated, and used fanaticism and terrorism, spreading insecurity, destruction, and causing all forms of crises, military, food, environmental, labor, humanitarian, of infinite proportions and ramifications. The forced and brutal displacement of thousands of people, including the elderly, children, boys and girls, entire families, from countries that were previously developed, such as Syria, Libya, Iraq, and Sub-Saharan Africa. All of this lays bare the true nature of wars and of terrorism and the conflicts which we experience 
created and promoted as they are by the greed of the empire of global capitalism. We all have stated that this situation will get worse unless we act together to address and resolve the causes of so much distress, barbarism and catastrophe. Our organization should encourage respect, peace, sovereign security, justice and solidarity among human beings. Our organization must respond to this barbaric intervention in and interruption of our tranquility and the right to prosperity in the lives of millions of families, of countries and of peoples. Our organization must respond to the challenges of our time with measures and actions that reflect the supreme interests of peoples, respect the inviolability of sovereignty, the recognition of national natural resources, the promotion of security, justice and peace. It should not be ignored that the achievement of the so-called Millennium Development Goals was hindered by the awful impact of wars and terrorism created by and encouraged by the empires. Moreover, climate imbalance or climate change, the unusual frequency of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, disasters, epidemics, droughts, floods, landslides, all calamities known to man have vented their fury on the most impoverished countries. Countries and peoples that had fully implemented the MDGs, such as Syria, Libya and Iraq, have seen interventions and have been devastated by terrorism which is promoted to sustain imperial invasions and wars. And all of this is disguised as internal conflict brought about in an effort to seize and take control over our natural resources. The hand of empire can be seen in all regions of the world in the form of intrigue, aggression, manipulation and all kinds of interference directed against legitimate democratic processes intended to weaken governments and to influence institutions wreaking havoc and deliberately creating interruptions in the social, political and economic life of our peoples. In Latin America and the Caribbean we have reiterated our desire to declare ourselves a zone of peace and fair development and our commitment to continue to create conditions in each country and in the region to achieve through dialogue and through coming together firm and enduring peace and justice. The pending MDG agenda and the new world agenda to combat poverty requires the following restoring peace, sovereign security, respect for independence, the natural resources of every people for dignity and for cultures, to work for justice, to work for equality, to work for development requires the establishment of a culture of coming together, of dialogue, of consensus. It requires the recovery of the essential values of humanity. It requires putting an end to wars and terrorism that have been created and nurtured. And it requires the constructive work of dialogue and respectful affirmation of sovereign security and peace. Nicaragua and the Government of Reconciliation and National Unity has worked to 
fight against poverty, as can be seen in national and international indicators. Conciliation and national unity has worked to fight against poverty, as can be seen in national and international indicators. And it's on the basis of this commitment and as a government and a country and a people that are committed to our rights and well-being and security for Nicaraguan families, it is from this point of view that we are raising here in the United Nations and proposing to the United Nations that it should take on the responsibility of addressing the battles to come. We have to work for justice, for peace, respect, dialogue, sovereign security in the world. In order to do this, we have to bring about the indispensable changes so that this organization can serve the interests of all its members. We would like to highlight that during the presidency of this assembly in 2008, uh, Father Miguel de Scotto developed these very ideas and proposals uh, complying with Nicaragua's mandate to establish the basis for the discussion of these transformations and to serve as a basic document for reinvention of the United Nations. We feel that only when we have a United Nations that is fair and democratic, that has been recast, recreated, and is functioning properly for the world and for humanity in the 21st century, only when we have that can we really face the great challenges of our time. Our government and our people advocate for a world of values where human beings are able to count on the best of ourselves and create the best possible conditions for a just development that is sustainable, fair, secure, and sovereign, and so that advances in science and technology that uh, we can see in all parts of our lives are accessible and can be shared by all. The government and the people of Nicaragua harbor the hope that Paris COP21 will result in a commitment for climate justice as an indispensable and a, as well as a concluding an indispensable policy of indemnization, uh, direct and unconditional uh, compensation. Those that are responsible for the degradation uh, and climate change should recognize our losses and should contribute to this recovery, to restoring the right to health and life of Mother Earth and the peoples of the world. Nicaragua calls for a world in solidarity and for a recasting of the United Nations in the interests of all so that we're able to listen and talk to each other on an equal footing, all member states. We also advocate for a respectful, responsible and ethical role uh, to be played by United Nations agencies, devoid of any form of interference and intervention in the internal affairs of sovereign states. Once again, we come with the greetings of the people of Nicaragua with the hope that this 70th anniversary and the commitments that we make will lead to an open process of reflection with regard to how we can change this organization, reinvent it and make it democratic. From Nicaragua, blessed and always free, we are committed to the initiative to recreate, reinvent, and refound the United Nations to, in order to deal with the growing demands of a democratic organization that will 
serve the supreme interest of sovereign security, justice and peace in the world. I hope that the United Nations will fulfill this role to provide for dialogue, respect, understanding, secure, sovereign security, peace and future without interference, but working together equally. In other words, with everyone, for everyone, for the well-being of everyone. Let it be such. Daniel Ortega Saavedra, President of Nicaragua, the 1st of October 2015. Thank you very much.